For the third part of the project, I spoke with Chris Topic again. We met at the Botanical Gardens near the library on West Circle. Um, I thought this would be a nice place to enjoy the good weather we had that day and just have a nice, relaxed place to talk. Uh, my thoughts were that it would be a straightforward conversation, but perhaps a little awkward or artificial. Um, because it's kind of a strange request to interview someone about how they learn um, or when they're one of your peers. Um, but in reality, it wasn't bad. It was a pretty easygoing conversation, um, especially one of the key moments was that uh, once I first asked the first question and we started talking, then it really opened up and um, we both relaxed. Uh, I also felt that when I introduced my own perspective about halfway through, um, the conversation got a lot easier and um, Chris was more comfortable speaking honestly about what he does in his learning and in his class and um, giving some more perspective on that. Um, he talked about uh, an honors chemistry course for the most part, um, which she found challenging because of its fast pace and wide range of topics to cover, so some of them he was naturally good at, but others um, were confusing or more difficult for him to learn. Um, he could sometimes um, tell if he was going to do well on an examination, but um, sometimes not, so metacognition was um, not either not, not the best or it was difficult in that particular course to know how that was going to go. Um, strategies that he uses for chemistry are writing down the givens in a problem, so any information that is given, um, like numbers, data, um, what you're solving for, that kind of thing. Um, I'll writing those separately and also creating a diagram with them, which might be filled in with other information as he solves the problem. Um, for studying, one of his strategies is solving um, homework or um, example problems while looking at the solutions um, until he actually knows how to do that problem by himself so that he can um, memorize the steps to the problem. Um, I guess this would be kind of a form of rehearsal. Um, where Rather than rehearsing just factual information though, it's rehearsing um, methods of solving a, a problem. Um, chemistry involves a lot of algorithmic thinking, I would say, um, because there's definitely a process and an order of steps uh, that has to be followed. Um, he learned his strategies from experience, um, what he's had success with in the past when he's done well on tests. Um, he remembers the kinds of things he did to study for those tests or to learn those um, sections and then he uses those strategies again. Also from what peers and teachers have recommended and also just what's available. If there are example problems available, he'll do those. If there's um, there are good notes on a section or um, the slides are up, he'll look at those. Um, so I see a lot of similarities to myself in this. Um, I go back and do problems for sure for science classes um, to go back and practice before a test. And um, I also write down the givens and draw diagrams for problems. Um, I think I'm a little more metacognitive in my learning. I like to think so. Um, I usually have a very good idea of whether or not I'm going to do well on an exam and of whether or not I understand something. If I don't, I'll go back and look at that again. Um, one more. Um, for his motivation um, and attribution uh, characteristics, he tends to attribute things mostly to his effort. Um, Although he'll make statements such as, oh, this person is really smart or really good at this, just naturally, um, I do feel like 
he puts in more effort when he wants to do better or when he feels he's not achieving as he'd like, he works harder. And I think that really indicates that he attributes success to um, effort um, and has, um, rather than an entity view of um, knowledge. Uh, he he likes challenge and um, he does enjoy chemistry um, so there's some intrinsic motivation for that too he's a chemistry major um, partially because uh, it's likely to lead to a steady career but also because he finds it very interesting and useful um, so he feels excuse me he feels he's contributing to his society and to community uh, his community so that would also contribute to a more intrinsic motivation uh, to feel like he's doing something meaningful. Um, he says he usually tries his hardest, but um, it's at some times uh, he puts in um, less effort just because he's tired or it's just hard to keep up top effort all the time. Um, but when he needs to, he really puts in the work to um, achieve um, and to get good grades, uh, which are really important to him. So there is that also that um, extrinsic motivation of grades and of achieving success in the future are both extrinsic sources, which are very important to him. Because like I discussed in my last um Vlog, uh, it's very important to him to get a good job so he can give back to his parents and support them. Um, so that's kind of an internally driven factor, but it's still an extrinsic motivation. Um, I think uh, a lot of this is similar. I like challenge uh, with me. I like challenge. Um, my major is music, so it's very different from chemistry, but a lot of the same applies. I practice a lot when I need to, and um, uh, when uh, in order to achieve to the level that I want. Um, some of that ex extrinsic, um, because of grades or because of the approval of my instructors, but I think even more of it is intrinsic for me because I just really love music. Um, uh, I have a very strong attribution of um, intelligence to, or performance to effort rather than just innate ability, um, probably even more than Chris does. So I, that was my interview. It was um, an interesting conversation and I learned a lot of similarities um, and some differences between myself and Chris.